I have logged into my personal instance of Papercut MF. Tabs are on the left. Let's log in to the Accounts tab. At the top, we see that we are in the Shared Account list. There's also a Batch Import slash Update tab and a Shared Account Sync tab. Let's review the Batch Import slash Update tab. The Batch Import feature is used to create new accounts or update the details of existing accounts based on the information supplied by a tab-separated file. Click the More Information link for details of how to use this feature as well as the format of the TSV. Then it's a simple matter of browsing to the file location using this button and pressing Import. You can also test the import prior to initiating it. Also take note of the checkbox to optionally delete accounts if they do not exist in the file. Accounts may need to remain in Papercut for reporting down the line, so take care when deleting as this is a destructive action. Under Shared Account Sync, we notice the source options are either a text file or a file system directory scan. If the end user has a folder on their computer that contains all of the accounts they want to use, then this is a reliable option since any changes made to the folder will be reflected in Papercut automatically. Here is the location of the folder relative to the server. Then there is the option to perform the synchronization overnight or every hour. And you can treat subdirectories as subaccounts by checking this box and or delete accounts that do not exist. The same caution applies in that this is a destructive action. When using file location, you can enter the path relative to the server here and then perform the sync overnight or hourly and the same delete accounts checkbox is available for this action as well. For details on the file format, click the more information link. Back to the shared account list. Right below is a quick find. Very useful when there are thousands of accounts in the system and you need to locate one right away. On the right are actions, including creating a new account manually, a quick PDF of an account print summary over the last 30 days, and in the middle are bulk account actions. This includes changing balances to all or a group of accounts at once, including a comment as to why this happened. Change settings to where the accounts are restricted, enabled, or disabled. Changing invoicing options, comments, and cost multipliers. Security options can be changed in the next section, including adding or removing security groups or users. You can also change quota scheduling settings as well as do a bulk delete of shared accounts. Let's go back to the shared account list where we see that we have a template account to begin with. Here you can set the defaults to be used so that when a new account is created it will obtain these settings automatically. Default security settings can also be applied to the template. The list view contains the name of the shared account, a code for the account if required, an optional balance to be used with all users of the account and the restriction status of each account. If the balance drops to zero, accounts with a restricted status will be unable to print or copy. Restricted accounts are represented with a large red X, whereas disabled accounts use a smaller one. In my example, I am not allowing users to charge to an upper level account, only the sub account below represented by the unlock icon here. I can also quickly sort my accounts by code by clicking on the header. Let's open up this account to see how it's been configured. Along the top are tabs for adjustments and charges, security, transactions, and a job log. Adjustments and charges provides an administrator the ability to correct the current balance of the account with a comment field available for input. Next tab is where the security actions can be set so the account can be restricted to only the users or groups that need to have access. The transactions tab will include job ticketing or miscellaneous charges to the account with quick reports below. And the job log will display all recent print jobs with easy access to a PDF 
HTML view, or CSV output. Filters are accessible here. Back on the details page of the account, we notice that this one is a sub-account. The parent code is identified, and the subcode or PIN can be set here. The balance is indicated with a quick link to the Adjustment and Charges page. Here is the restricted checkbox, with the ability to disable the account right below. Also take note on the right side are quick actions for creating, deleting, modifying, and viewing items at a glance. Back on the left, we can affect the client's invoicing options as well as change how to handle comments. Below that are overrides to printer costs by a percentage. Take note that this can be a plus or minus charge depending on the value that's used here. Quota scheduling is next with the ability to create a custom time frame for each quarter, semester, or any other needed range simply by inputting dates in this field. You can then tailor the amount and determine if the added funds can roll over or if a limit is put on the maximum amount allowed. Finally, notes can be added to better identify the purpose of this shared account. Don't forget to click OK to submit your changes. And there's a look at the Accounts tab in the Papercut dashboard.